SATA, PCIe, and SAS are all different types of data interfaces. Any of these three interfaces can be used to connect up a storage device like a hard drive or an SSD to your computer. While data interfaces like PCIe can be used for other things like connecting up heavy bandwidth components like GPUs, in this video, all three data interfaces will be compared in the context of storage devices. Before we start, it is also important to note that SATA, PCIe, and SAS are data interfaces and not storage devices themselves. For example, an SSD is a storage device and it can come in both SATA and PCIe connectors. Serial ATA, or SATA for short, is the first data interface we'll be discussing today. SATA has been the old boy of data interfaces for storage devices since the early 2000s. SATA interface was designed for hard disk drives and to this day, SATA is the most widely used data interface used for storage devices. This is primarily due to its low cost associated with SATA interfaces. Due to SATA's popularity, the majority of motherboards have several SATA ports on them, but SATA interface doesn't provide enough bandwidth to keep up with the data transfer speeds of most SSDs nowadays. A standard SATA connector can transfer a maximum speed of up to 600 megabytes per second, with most SATA SSDs reaching around 500 megabytes per second. SATA connectors though weren't always this fast. First generation SATA connectors could only do a maximum of 150 megabytes per second, but even the latest generation just isn't fast enough to keep up with the current transfer speeds of NVMe SSDs. NVMe SSDs can reach transfer speeds of around 7,000 megabytes per second. If this SSD was using a SATA connector, it would be hard capped at 600 megabytes per second since the bus would be saturated. This is one of the main reasons why most high performance SSDs have shifted away from SATA interfaces in favor of the more powerful PCI Express interface. While SATA may not be obviously the fastest connection available, it is somewhat the cheapest. However, this is fast changing. SATA drives nowadays are more used for cheap archiving of data while needing faster speeds than a hard drive. Serial Attach SCSI, or SAS for short, is the second data interface that we'll be looking at in this video. SAS-based hard drives have been with us actually since the SATA-based drives have been around. So it's not actually a new technology or a newer technology than SATA. SAS offers faster speeds compared to SATA connectors, as it can go as high as 1800 megabytes per second. Hard disk drives that use the SATA connector are capped at around 1500 revolutions per minute as compared to a SATA connector that can only go up to 10,000 revolutions per second. If this wasn't obvious, the faster the hard drive RPM, the faster it can transfer data. SAS is not only faster than SATA, but it can also connect up a lot more devices than the SATA interface. A SATA supported computer can only support around a dozen or so SATA drives at its maximum while SAS-supported computers can support up to 128 storage devices. This can be done through daisy-chaining drives or using expansion cards. So you might be asking, if SAS drives are so much better than SATA, and it has also been around for a similar time as SATA drives, why aren't these being more commonly used by people? Well, the main reason is price. The cost per gigabyte for SAS hard drives is almost double as compared to SATA hard drives, if not even more, which makes them less accessible for the average PC user and builder. Plus, there are better price to performance SSDs out there, like M.2 NVMe SSDs, which is easier to use and smaller, making it better for installs in laptops and desktop PCs. But but SAS drives have found for themselves a small place in the modern world. Their speed and their ability to connect with multiple devices simultaneously made them a popular choice to be used as storage devices for servers. And this is where you'll find the majority of SAS drives, like in server farms and large corporative data servers. However, at a consumer level, if you want more speed and to be honest, better price to performance levels, it just makes sense to go down the PCIe route. This is because it is faster, becoming cheaper by the day, and almost all new motherboards support this interface. With SSDs becoming a norm for main storage devices 
in PCs, people are needing faster and faster speeds from their SSDs. The solution to this problem was using the PCIe interface for storage devices. Peripheral Component Interconnect Express, or PCIe for short, is a pretty standard connector on most motherboards now to connect components that require really fast data speeds to obviously the computer. PCI was used in desktop computers for connecting components like graphics cards before it was even used for storage. This is why here at Sabrin, we are constantly pushing the limits of what's possible from SSDs every year that passes, most of the time being the first to things like producing the first eight terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD or being the first to make the first four terabyte PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD. A PCI connector is a very versatile connector in nature. It comes in a diverse range of arrangements like from one lane, four lane, eight lanes and 16 lanes. Most motherboards these days have multiple PCIe Express ports. The larger one like 16 lanes are generally used for GPUs while four lane PCIe ports are used for connecting up things like NVMe SSDs. The data transfer rates on PCIe interfaces can vary depending on generation. For example, the Gen 4 PCIe generation supports speeds of up to 8,000 megabytes per second, not including obviously the overhead. This is a massive leap forward over the other two data interfaces. What's even more impressive is that Gen 4 isn't even the latest generation. The latest generation is Gen 5 PCIe interface, which can do speeds of up to 12,800 megabytes per second. Gen 5 though is still very, very new. It was announced back in 2019, but we won't be seeing motherboards and uh, SSDs until probably around mid-2022. For now, the most common generation of PC is Gen 4. Even though Gen 5 motherboards are coming out as we speak, it's still not obviously the mainstream standard. Transfer speeds aside, the PCI interface has another great advantage over the other two. It is very easy on cable management in your system and allows for small storage devices, meaning more SSDs in the same given area. PCI storage devices directly plug into the PCI slot on your motherboard, so there's no need for long cables to manage as is the case with SATA and SAS connectors. Among the three interfaces, each interface serves a specific purpose. However, undoubtedly, the PCIe Express interface will become the norm as it just brings a lot of benefits to consumers. The technology is not only getting faster, but cheaper too. The same way that SCSI and PATA is no longer used for the most part, these other two standards are slowly becoming less and less important as PCIe becomes more and more accessible. Having said that though, there is still many applications where the other two standards are useful, but for the most part, even PC Gen 3 SSDs like our Sabrin Rocket Q are just as affordable as their SATA SSD counterparts, but providing much faster speeds in a smaller form factor. But at the end of the day, it is up to you to decide what you need. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to smash that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, then click that subscribe button and notification bell so you stay updated. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.